Welcome to Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. My name is Talib Jassir, founder and CEO of Afros and Audio Podcast Festival and the Vanguard Podcast Network. I'm excited to spotlight 29 outstanding indie podcast creators and professionals who answer the call to be a part of this series. My guest today is Laura Rutledge. Welcome and thank you for being here. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. I'm really excited about having this conversation with you today. It's been long overdue. So can you share your journey from a corporate senior executive to launching the Rutledge Perspective Podcast and how this transition has influenced your approach to leadership and entrepreneurship? Sure. So I was in corporate almost 30 years. And honestly, it was just a point where I just had to go. It was either me or them. And at December 2016, I found myself at home over Christmas and looking at these people that I loved with all my heart. And I was thinking, why am I here? Why are y'all breathing my air? Why are folks talking to me? And I thought, wait a minute, these are like people I love. These are people who love me and I am giving them the worst of me. And these people that just write me a check and are causing me so much stress are the people that get the best of me. And that is not okay. And that day I decided I'm out. And so in February of 2017, I walked in and I resigned and said, I'm done. I'm just going to go do my own thing and started my business in January of 2018. And as I started my business, I had several coaches and one of them said, Laurel, you should really do a podcast. And I thought, mm, I don't know, because, you know, my, my very last role was a senior executive in human resources. And I didn't even have a picture on LinkedIn. I'm not that girl. They call it an ambivert, right? I'm professionally extroverted, but I prefer to just be with a small group of people or just by myself. Just I'm good like that. And I was already doing video. I was already kind of out there on social media. And I thought, you want me to do a podcast? Have you lost your mind and do a video? No, ma'am. And she said, no, Laurel, you really should do a podcast. And so I launched my podcast at the end of 2018 with just a couple of episodes and I started it with a story that my dad told me a long time ago uh, about the crow. And I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. And it kind of waned a little bit. So I did five episodes and I was supposed to have someone to publish some for me. And because it was new, so new podcasters, listen to this, because it was new and it wasn't really ingrained in my spirit and it was a chore for me because it was visibility. It was consistency. It was all the things that are hard. When the person didn't do what they said they were going to do for me to put them out there, it gave me a chance to not do. So there were several months that I didn't put it out there. I didn't record. I didn't. And I allowed that person's failure to become my reason to be still. And then in January, 2019, I said, you know what? I am going to be more visible. That's my goal is to be more visible. And I started doing the podcast again, probably around July. And I got the radio show in August. And here we sit five years later, 200 episodes of the podcast, four years of the radio show. I just finished the radio show. So I won't be doing that anymore. And I'm going all in on the podcast again. So it just turned out to be something that I loved connecting with people, giving out messages, interviewing great people. It's a way to really make an impact. And it's important, I think, to understand that if you're going to go into this podcast game, and you know this better than most, decide how you want to do your podcast. So the folks that say you have to do it every week, you have to do it four times a day. You have to do it in seasons. You have whatever it is, you do you as long as it's consistent. Absolutely. I love that. And thank you for sharing that story. It's very cool. And it brought to mind this Howard Thurman quote that says, there's two questions you must ask yourself. Where am I going and who's going to go with me? And if you ever get those two questions yes. mixed up, you're in trouble, right? Because you yes. have to be in a mindset of, what it is that you want to do and the vision. And whoever says they're coming with you, they may not, but you still got to be in that intentionality and that joy of creating something. So I love that that was your journey because it's an important journey and yes. a lot of people go through it and they stop when that yes. other person, that option, that's all that other person symbolizes is the option, one foot in yes. and, and one foot out, right? 
That's all they yes. are. And in those instances, how do we persevere inside of that? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. yes. All right. So how has yeah. your podcast yeah. served as a platform for discussing leadership, showing up and speaking truth to power? And what impact do you believe this has had on your listeners and the broader community? Wow. It's been such a revelation. So when I started the podcast, I said, I want this to be short and sweet. So this was pre-pandemic, right? I want this to be short and sweet, commute worthy. That was actually in my intro. And it was all of the things that I experienced, right? Showing up, going to the corporate party. Yes, you got to show up, even introverts. And I would give little tips like, look, no, you don't want to go to the party, but the party's not about you. It's about folks knowing who you are. And if you don't want to be there, put your strategy together. I don't want to be there. So what do I do? I volunteer to work the table or I volunteer to do something in setup. Cause see, I'm not going to do cleanup. Cause that means I have to stay all night, not doing that. And then what I do is I work the entire room that first hour and then I leave, but I just bought myself an extra hour because by the time people figure out I'm gone, I'm at home in my pajamas with my feet up. So the whole podcast was about, look, you need to do you, but you also need to understand that there is a difference between selling out and assimilation. There is an art to political savvy that says you need to understand where you are so you can do what you got to do until you can do what you want to do within reason. Do not do anything that's going to keep you unsafe and do not do anything that is truly against your values. That's not what I'm saying. But you have got to be playing chess, not checkers, especially when you show up looking like us in corporate America. And so what I've gotten back from people who've listened to the episodes, they've said things like, oh my gosh, I so needed to hear that today. I didn't even think of it that way. You know what? That helped me so much. Like I just, my 200th episode was sometimes that Rejection is redirection. How can you shift that perspective, the Rutledge perspective? How can you shift that perspective in order to shift your circumstances? And so that whole idea of we just need to listen to things broadly. We need to allow ourselves the opportunity to pause because there's power in the pause, to think differently, to honor and understand our emotions, but to also know that the power is in managing those emotions and responding the way you want to respond. Because if you always respond emotionally, people tune that out, just like little kids do. When parents are always yelling and screaming, kids don't listen to that. But the minute your voice gets real quiet and you start whispering and they have to lean in to figure out what you're saying, that gets attention. So the whole podcast has been about how do we change the way we show up, still be us, still be intentional, still be real, but adjust how we do it to make the biggest impact. It's not about code switching because that's deep. And I talk about that on the podcast. That's deep. That's a whole different issue. This is about utilizing the system to our advantage until we decide to exit the system. That's what it's about. I love that. And it is one of those things where it's real and... If I left one environment so that I could experience life differently, why would I show up the same yes. in the environment that I've created for myself? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That part. That part. And the podcast is the platform, right? It's yours. It's an opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I think I also take it as not only an opportunity, I also take it, as they say, to whom much is given, much is expected. I feel like... I've been given the opportunity. I've been given a voice. I have been given gifts that enable me to speak and to speak well. And I listen to kind of that divine download that says, you know what, you should speak about this today or you experienced this thing. Let's talk about that. And I believe it's important to talk about those things with a voice that is from experience that I acknowledge is from my lived experience and not necessarily everybody else's. And that just because it's not everybody else's doesn't mean that mine's not valid. And it also doesn't mean that yours isn't valid. It means that it's all valid. And just as you expect me to respect yours, 
I expect you to respect mine. And in that respect, we might actually learn something. And I also believe that it's important for me to use that platform to speak about things like voting and voting and getting out there and using our voices because people died for us to be able to exercise our right to vote. And so I cannot imagine leaving this world without doing something to make an impact, whatever that is, however that is. And I'm still learning. So every day that I'm on this earth and on this side of the daisies, I'm trying to take advantage of whatever opportunities I have and make the most of it. And as long as the Lord says the same, I'm going to keep going. I love that. So first of all, congratulations on over 200 episodes. Thank That's you. amazing. And really speaks to how you can start off a little rocky and not yes. know if or how, <laughs> but yes. you stick with it and, and here you are. Yes. So that's amazing. Yes. So with over 200 episodes behind you, what strategies have you found most effective in engaging your audience and delivering content that resonates? Man, that is a great question because when I first started the podcast, I wrote like this whole list. Here's all the things I'm going to talk about. And then when I got ready to do each episode, I actually wrote a blog post first because my mind was kind of messy, right? I had to write it out and then I do bullet points and then I would record the podcast episode. And over time, so now it's been five years, over time, I actually, there were some days when I would wake up and I'm like, oh, that's what I need to talk about today <laughs> because nothing would come to me. And I would literally open my mouth. So I, I had a new podcast producer and he would record for me at my radio studio. And one time he said, hey, can you just do something real quick? I'm like, oh, I can't think of anything. He said, okay, well maybe. And I thought, oh, no, I got something. And he just turned on the camera and I said, Bleh! and it just happened. So for me, what I started doing was saying, I've been listening to what people are telling me. And I got really intentional about being present in conversations with my clients, conversation with my village, conversations that I was having with people in the different social platforms, conversation with people in Afros and audio, right? Conversation with people in the Black Podcasters Association. What were the things I was hearing when I was engaging with people? And what were the things that I experienced through that nearly 30 year career? And that was the stuff that was informing content. And every single time I did something like that, someone came back and said, Oh my God, that's what I needed to hear today. I can't believe you just said that. That was nothing but a word. And so I really, instead of trying to be so like strategic and really structured in everything, I let it flow. I just really surrendered to the flow. Now, that being said, it is also important to have some kind of structure because that also gave, at least for me, gave me a lot of anxiety. I'm like, oh, what am I going to talk about? So as I go into this next 200 episodes, we're doing it a little bit differently. I'm going to go back to trying to do a production day and at least have some topics ready and talk about those. And if I use them that week, I use them. If not, if something comes up, I have freedom because it's my show, right? I have freedom to change that up if I want to. Um, I've got a whole new segment that's going to be starting in 2024 that we're going to use. So it's over time, that ability to find the flow that feels good and then also combine it with a little bit of structure so that it is a combination that works with enough structure that feels safe, but enough fluidity that feels open for creativity. And it just takes time for most of us. I think some people are really good at just knowing what they need in the moment. But I would say for many of us who've never done this kind of stuff before, it's going to take a minute and just give yourself some grace to take that minute. Yes, to all of that. It's true. There, This is a process in discovery, self-discovery in a lot of ways. How does this work for me? <laughs> How can I do this with that yes. authenticity that I, I absolutely want? Because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is what it's going to take. However, yes. how do I get out of here yes. <laughs> in order for it to yes. just come from here? And it still sound structured. <laughs> And, and, and smart. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's all of that. <laughs> it's all of that. All of that. All yes. And a lot of times we're doing more of the work of the labor inside of that than even our audience. They're accepting us as we are and as we show up. But it's a testament to the desire to do it mm -hmm. in a way that is an excellence, in a way that feels good for you. So I, I really love that. And yeah, and I, I know that the next 200 is just going to be more of that. 
with more of the learning. I hear a lot of people when they say, I just wish I could go back to this or that. I'm like, why would you want to do that? You've grown so much. (laughs) Be with who you are today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's Mm -hmm. great. That's great. So launching and sustaining a podcast can be filled with its challenges. Can you share a significant obstacle you overcame in your podcasting journey and what it taught you about perseverance and creativity in the podcasting space? You just really kind of broke that down. But if there's anything else you want to enlighten us with. I think the biggest thing I touched on a little bit, the biggest thing is deciding what you want your podcast to be. And this isn't everything, whether it's podcasting, starting a business, whatever it is, decide what works for you because the consistency piece is key. So I decided I wanted to do weekly, but if you're out there in the podcast space, if you're doing the social media thing, you've got to post on this place 52 times a minute, right? You got to do this thing. There's so much and it's not possible to do everything everywhere all the time. It's just not possible. And even if you pay millions of dollars for someone else to do it for you, it's still not possible for them to always have your voice. So decide where you want to be and how you want to be number one so that you can be consistent. If that is once a month and you can really be consistent once a month, do that once a month. If you can be every day, do that every day because what happens is your audience starts looking for you. They start getting excited about it. And one of the things that I found out, I was up to, and this is gonna sound really small to a lot of people, but it was great for me. I was up to a consistent like five to 600 you know, downloads a month. And that went from 10 a month, right? 20 a month where I was like, why am I doing this? And it was exponentially growing. And then I decided, well, I'm going to change the format a little bit. And because I'm changing the format, I need a little more time. Let's just move it to Thursdays. And I announced it, but I didn't announce it consistently. And I just moved it. Tanked, completely tanked. I was devastated because it had been five years, five years of building. And I crashed it in a week a week and my heart was crushed and it would have been so easy for me to just say, well, that means I just need to stop. It's not worth it. People didn't love it. It was just a lie. It was just bots, all the head trash. And I thought, no, here's the learning in that one. You didn't tell people (laughs) you just moved it. And in the podcast space, people get used to things. And if you move it, okay, but they're only going to be so willing to move with you, right? If you really don't tell them because they've got their schedule set up and if you mess up their schedule, they're not necessarily going to move with you. And even if you move back, they might already be gone. So you just got to be ready to try to work to either get them back or get new people. So you just got to know that now you've just kind of started over with some folks. The other thing is, why did you do it? I started the podcast initially for thought leadership, for visibility. Again, remember I said, when I started my business, I did the podcast as a way to build the business. The podcast was a way to build visibility, credibility, thought leadership, right? I wasn't doing it to be a podcaster. I was doing it as a function of my business. And that means that I was like, I get 10, I get 20, I get whatever. It's really just saying I'm a podcaster kind of thing. And it turned into something more meaningful for me. So now I had to go back and say, Laurel, why are you doing this podcast? You are doing this podcast to make an impact. If that's one person who today says, you know what? I am going to keep showing up. If today one person says, I don't need that job because I really am a genius. I'm going to go not hurt me. I'm going to make a plan and go do something else. You have done the work of the podcast just because you made a mistake because you didn't plan well, doesn't mean five years worth of work goes down the drain. Don't be crazy. Listen to your own advice. Let's just regroup and redo this and get back on the game. And so that was big learning for me to say, yes, you don't do this for the following. You don't do this for all of the accolades and all that kind of stuff. That stuff is really nice and, and it feels good and it is important. And your deeper why is that you do this because one, you have something to say. Two, you really enjoy doing it. It gives you joy. But three, it's a way to reach people that you may never even know you reached. You never know who's watching. 
you never know who's listening. And I know that every once in a while, I'll just turn something on. I'll just find a podcast. And every single time I hear something that I needed to hear that day from somebody that I may never have listened to before, it just popped up in my feed. And so if I don't continue, I will never be that person for someone who needs to hear what I have to say. So that learning of a real challenge to quit, a real opportunity to say, forget it, was a learning and a blessing to say, oh, that was just a teaching moment. That just means be consistent, think through that, be that strategy person that you are for other people, for yourself, pause before you just make grand sweeping changes and be strategic around those things that you do. And then let people know, don't just make one announcement and say, hey, I'm going to be doing something different and expect people to follow. Pay attention to what you're doing. So it was painful, but I'm still here and I still love it. And people are coming back. So it is what it is. <laughs> That's awesome. It goes to that quote, pay attention to the details or the details will pay attention to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I love that. I love the challenge and what a big challenge it was to say, yes. okay, quit or stay. And then to decide to stay is remarkable because a lot of people just don't. And that one post is mostly, or that one announcement is mostly the nail in the coffin. People think that it's reached the masses. No, no. just like you've done 200 episodes, you might have to do 20, <laughs> 10% yes. of that just to get people to understand. No, yes. remember I said, so yeah, it's important. And, and again, the opportunity to grow as you go along, it, yes. it will come all of these lessons, but you don't know which you don't right. know and you can't know it until you have the experience. Yeah. And so fi finding grace in that is really important as well. So yeah. thank yeah. you for coming back. Yeah. I said all that to thank say, you. thank you for not quitting. <laughs> thank you for having Absolutely. me. I love it. <laughs> right. So based on your experience, what is one piece of advice you would offer to podcasters and audio professionals looking to make a meaningful impact through their work, through their podcasts? Wow. Ooh, all these deep questions. I think the one singular piece of advice that I would give to people is do a podcast that means something to you. Don't try to pick something that you think is going to matter to someone else. Because if you're doing it for someone else, you're not going to reach them. If you're doing it because you know it matters to you and you know that it really resonates deeply with you, that means you are going to show up in your power as who you are, giving everything that you are. And because you're doing that, it is going to impact and is going to reach people. Use your expertise, use your experience, use who you are to create something, right? Like the people who have all of the, like the true crime podcasts and all of those kind of things. Those people aren't all detectives and police officers. They just love true crime. They really want to figure out what's happening with people. And look how that's taking off, right? So do something that you love that really excites you, that really makes you excited. I love talking to people about your words and actions need to align because people will listen to what you say, but they will believe what you do. I love talking about that. So I talk about it all the time. I love talking about leadership. I love talking about how we show up. Those things matter to me because I've seen it. I've seen the impact and I've been a victim of really bad leadership. And because I love it and believe in it, it comes across in the way my podcast happens and the way my tone comes across and the words that I use and the guests that I interview. So that one piece of advice is don't try to build a podcast with the sole goal of being famous or being building this main audience or all that. Do it because you want to do it because it's work. It is work. And it's going to be more work if you're doing something that's not because you want to do it, but just because you want the audience. So do it because you love it and because the topic is something you love. That's great advice. And I have a curious question for you. You started the podcast Rutledge Perspective in order to be an extension of your business and, and mm -hmm. secure clients. Yes. Is there a particular strategy, a CTA or something that you decided to incorporate early on to ensure that this is very clear? I'm here. Mm -hmm. This is my business. This is the work that I do. And I would love for you to work with me. Mm -hmm. And you're understanding my credibility and my authority through the podcast. Was there any specific strategy that you did to convert clients? And has that been a successful mm -hmm. um, endeavor? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> Look, we keep it real here, right? No. So 
remember, I came out of corporate as someone who did not like to be visible at all. And someone else told me, you should really do a podcast for visibility and thought leadership. So I was doing it for visibility. But my visibility thing was, oh, you're showing up. That was the most my brain could tolerate in terms of visibility. I wouldn't think like I was thinking, oh, it's visibility. So that's a CTA. I wasn't my brain wasn't connecting. No, you have to actually tell people, no, here's what you're doing. Right. Here's how you work with me. Here's a, I just I wasn't connecting all those dots at all whatsoever. And then as I did the podcast, I just got really invested in doing the podcast because I loved it. It truly wasn't until probably last year that I started being much more intentional about, hey, and here's how you work with me. Hey, here's where my website is. Hey, here's how you, it really wasn't until further in the podcast that I reconnected Laurel. You've got a lot of content here. These are real assets that demonstrate your leadership, your capability, your expertise that you should be really playing up into a CTA to drive clients. Now, I have gotten clients who've said, oh, I heard you on your radio show. Can you come speak for this? Hey, I heard you do this. I have someone who needs to talk to you. So it has brought clients to me, but that is a matter of timing, right? And being out there, but I have not been as good about being active in using it as my initial intention was because I did not connect the dots the way I thought I did. And so for those of you who are coming out of corporate, and are thinking one of the first things I'm going to do when I come out of corporate is start a podcast because that's the way I'm going to build my business. Let me tell you, there is a difference in brick and mortar and online service businesses. There's a difference in having just these brochures and things and CTAs and selling through podcasts. There's a difference in sponsorships and marketing materials. There is a difference and the language, the words may be the same, but the language is different. And I had to learn that. I, this is year seven in my business. And I had to really learn that. And so the podcast absolutely has gained me visibility, has gained me credibility, has brought me clients and brought me speaking engagements. Did I capitalize on it the way I could have? Absolutely not. That has been a learning journey. And that is one of the things that actually in year seven that I'm doing a much better job of is really having clear, consistent CTAs right? Because that's, and that's also head trash. You got to know yourself because I don't like being sold to. I hate being sold to because I get hard sale. Oh, I want to connect with you. Your profile is so great. You hit, sure. I'd like to connect. Oh, buy my stuff. I hate that. So I don't want to be that. And so what I find is for me, my response to that is I don't want to be that. So I never ask. Well, hell, you got to ask people. <laughs> you got to tell them what you're doing. You got to tell them how to work with you. Because I know when people work with me, there is transformative change in their business. I know this. I've proven this. I have the receipts. And no one else knows that if I don't tell them. And so it is definitely something that is a learning for me. And it's an amazing platform to use. So I would be lying if I told the audience, oh, absolutely, it worked. No, but it didn't work. Not because it can't work. It didn't work because I didn't work it, but that's changing. I'm so glad I asked that question. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah, it's important and divine timing, right? Yes. You may not have needed that extra pressure while you were working to build and create yes. and just be with the yes. podcast. So now it's time. And yes. that's awesome that you've gained mm -hmm. that clarity and that know-how because that's a difference yes. too. You might not have yes. done it in a way that landed before yes. now. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for answering that. Yeah. So you're planning to launch a new or segment you yes. mentioned earlier, focused on yeah. entrepreneurs this yeah. year. How do you see the landscape of podcasting evolving, particularly for content creators and for entrepreneurs? Yeah, it's very interesting. I see it changing in a couple of ways. One, all guys chilling got a podcast, right? But not every podcast is a quality podcast. And not every podcast is a podcast that is attempting to push things forward, so to speak. And, and I'm not casting dispersions because there are billions of people on the planet, which means there are billions of desires and likes and things that people are interested in on the planet. So you do you, right? I think what's changing, at least what I see, is post-COVID, 
And with the desire now of people to truly be focused on their own health, physical health, mental health, financial health, with what's happening societally, especially in the U.S., and what's going to be happening for us if you look at the demographic shift over the next 21 years, if we don't do something about it. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, just looking at the actuality of demographics and what's happening. What I see happening in podcasts is people are getting bolder about tackling really tough issues in organizations that are going to have to change, tough issues in society. And, and I think that's really important. People are willing to have really tough conversations and also willing to push back against all of the trolls and all of the really nasty and ugly language and just not tolerating ignorance. If you're going to come at me, come at me with facts. And I love seeing that because as I think it was Morrow that said, you are entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And the reality is facts do still matter. The truth does still matter. And it's just a very tiny part of the population that doesn't seem to believe this. They just seem to be really loud. So it makes you think that there's a bigger number of people who believe that. And so I'm seeing that change in podcasts where people are getting stronger and bolder and more confident in bringing really challenging things to the forefront. I also think that when I look at the move around podcasts for entrepreneurs, it's not just a visibility play anymore, right? Because it was. When I started doing one, there were still a lot of podcasts even when I started, but it was really all about visibility, right? Do a podcast because it's visibility. And I did video and audio, and now you're seeing more people doing that as well, right? Because it really was still mostly just audio when I started mine. And now you're seeing more people and more entrepreneurs starting podcasts. Yes, to sell, because you've got people who are truly those hardcore salespeople, but you're also seeing people start podcasts truly for impact's sake, which I love to see. And they are talking about generational wealth building. They are talking about mental health. They are talking about how we disrupt the systems around education and health equity. So from an entrepreneurial perspective, I'm seeing these pieces of the entrepreneurial landscape, these segments of business that are really being disrupted by entrepreneurs of color and by women of color who are grew by 114% in terms of business owners, right? Over the last decade, really taking on this podcast arena to further their impact on the world, on their communities to really make a difference. And so this genre of podcasting has such an incredible opportunity to increase reach. If you can sit in it, take it seriously, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect, but if you can take it seriously and then really invest some time in at least being quality, not perfection, but putting some quality into it, you can truly make an impact. And I think that's what I'm seeing, at least in terms of this entrepreneurial space, is people taking it seriously in order to increase impact. And that's what I think most really serious entrepreneurs are trying to do. Yes, they want to create wealth. They're trying to create freedom. They're trying to make sure they're creating a legacy for their families. Absolutely. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? We want to be able to be comfortable and financial freedom. The reality is money creates freedom, right? And people are realizing that it's bigger than that. And we need to do some other things to make sure that we are creating safety for people, that creating spaces where people can exist freely, creating places where there are fewer health disparities, that people are actually able to read books, any book they choose to read, those kind of things. And podcasts give such a global reach to be able to do that because there's no barriers to podcasting. And I love it. I love it. I love it too. Yeah, absolutely. And so your segment is going to be focused on <laughs> entrepreneurs making the impact that they intend. Yes, I'm going to be interviewing entrepreneurs and it's going to be talking about their journey, right, through entrepreneurship. And it's going to be interesting for me because I am, as you said, I'm taking it to the next level. So it'll just be a segment of the Rutledge Perspective. It's going to be called the Founders Intensive. And there will be a certain number of those because I've been recording 52 episodes, you know, a year. That's a lot. And so 
I'm probably going to be moving to seasons. I'm working with my strategist right now to figure out how we want to do this. And so I'll be recording these interviews with entrepreneurs, working them through, what did you do? Why did you do it? What is the impact you're trying to make? Who are you reaching? How are you transforming the things that they're doing with your work and with your expertise? And then I'm actually going to do deep dives, kind of behind the scenes kind of stuff with them. I may be doing some live coaching with them. So people will actually get to see me in action and two, depending on who it is and, and what the situation is. But those kind of things are also going to be behind maybe a subscription service or a paywall, which is new for me, right? So even though the podcast will be new, which is new territory, there's also going to be some challenging new for me that says, yes, give away your best. People will buy the rest. That is true, but that doesn't mean give away everything. And I've got giveaway of five years and I'm going to keep giving really exceptional stuff. And now there's some really great tea that you're going to have to invest in to get. And that's new for me. That is a little unnerving. But as you said earlier, it's time. It's time to take the yeah. plunge. We'll see what happens. <laughs> For sure. Well, I see great things happening with it. The, the intention is there. And knowing that this is the next level and the next yeah. level always requires the next level of yourself yeah. and that there is going to be a lot of value in, inside of that. And so because you have proven your value, it's only going to go up from here. I really believe that. So I wish you all the it. best in that. Yes, absolutely. Receive it. It's going to go well. So thank you for sharing that. And I'm really looking forward to that segment. So you mentioned wanting to promote your Founders Intensive for Women Entrepreneurs. Can you elaborate on what this entails and how it aligns with the themes of leadership and empowerment in your podcast? Sure. So the Founders Intensive is you're not a VIP day. So you hear about that a lot. It is targeted at female entrepreneurs who are running professional services businesses. So we're talking about design firms, marketing agencies, CPA firms, those kind of businesses who have teams and they're finding themselves having invested in a team, yet they're still working until midnight. They're still making all the decisions and yet they've invested in these teams. So they come and spend a day with me in this intense, that's why the founders intensive, intense business and organizational strategy session. And you'll come to Houston. We spend the entire day. We go have a really great lunch and you leave with a plan. And then I follow up with you three times after that, because when you work with me, it's not just about, let's just talk about it. Let's put some things on the table. No, we do some work. So the founders intensive, I'll send you some things ahead of time. You give me what you know already about what your goals are, what your strategy is, who your people are, what the organization is. And we go back to the beginning. Who are you as a leader? What do you want your business to accomplish and how do you want it to show up in the world? Those aligned values, who you are and where you are. And then what do you want? What is the vision? And then we get at how are you going to make it happen? So what skills do you need? Do you have the right people? If not, how do we get them? Are they in the right roles? And then what are the action plans, people, processes, and systems? And we move through that and get you ready and follow up and make sure it happens because you've already built an amazing business if you're at this level, right? It's just about tweaking. Most of the times I find it's not broken. It's about tweaking. And if you're in the bowels of your business, you're not able to pull up and see the forest for the trees. And so you come to me, get you out of that. You come to me, we make it happen. And that's the Founders Intensive. So it's all the stuff I talk about in the podcast, just concentrated in a full day, doing some serious work. And I love it. And the people that have been doing it are like, oh my gosh, I just needed this. I, that's why I call it chief navigation officer. I'm not necessarily telling you anything you don't know. What I am doing is shining a light on you and connecting dots that you didn't even realize were dots so that you can get to the goal that you have set for you. It's not about me. It's about me helping you navigate to where you want to be. And I've seen it work and it's amazing because these women are amazing. So that's the Founders Intensive. And you can get to me through my website, laurelrutledge.com. All things Laurel are there. Let's awesome, get on the call awesome. and see if it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And much needed work. You said it, being a coach myself as well, consultant, yeah. a lot of people are in their story and, and the opportunity to work with folks like yourself, where you have this helicopter view over yeah. what's going on. <laughs> right? I, yes. see, I see all these things and you can't see them. It's not that you don't know them already, but right. you're so in the work that you can. And so that opportunity to work with you in that yeah. way will definitely benefit a lot of people. 
So that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned before the radio show, and I know you said that it's sunsetting, yeah. but talk a little bit about that. How did it come about? Yeah. What was your experience briefly? And why are we yeah. moving away from it? I loved it. So I talked earlier, even with the podcast, it was all about visibility, right? So someone who didn't have their picture on LinkedIn, I was not on social media. I was only on Facebook under duress, right? Because my salsa group, I danced in an amateur salsa team and um, street salsa, not that ballroom stuff, the way they dance salsa in Cuba and Panama. And I was only on Facebook because we recorded our rehearsals on that. <laughs> so I was like, that's social media. So in 2019, I finally set an intention. I said, I've got to be more visible. And in August of that year, I got a call from a dear friend of mine that said, hey, I just, this friend of mine asked me to be on a radio show. I'm not going to do it. She's really introverted. She said, I don't want to do it. Can you go? And I'm like, sure, I'll go. No worries. And it's at KCOH, which is the oldest black radio station here in Houston, Texas. And it's the oldest one in Texas. It is a historic station. I mean, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, all, everybody came through KCOH. And it's got the highest time spent listening of all stations in the urban stations in the U.S. And I said, well, yeah, I'll go. And I, it's a radio station. I thought, well, I'll just, I'll look nice. And I thought, mm, I'll just t-shirt and stuff. And I thought, no, I've never met these people. Let me dress up. And I'm so glad I did. Cause when I walked in, I got ready to sit down. She said, okay, well, there's a camera there and there's a camera there. I'm like, camera. <laughs> she said, well, it's internet radio now. So we, it's not the KCOH that used to be on AM, right? This is internet radio and we project on Facebook. And I'm like, Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I decided to, to dress up. And it was a great show. And at the end of the show, the producer, Jerry P. Beasley, came up to me and she said, you need to have a show. I've got a, a, a spot on Tuesdays. And I was like, oh, let me think about that. Let me, I'll get back to you. And at the time I was in a little group that was called Broadcast Your Brilliance, right? That was really talking about visibility and all these things. And I went back to them and I was like, yeah, I was just asked to be on this radio show because we were talking about visibility. And they were like, and I said, I, I had to think about it. They were like, what? What do you mean you got to think? Of course you're going to be on this show. And I called her back in December and I said, hey, if it's still open, I'd like to do it. And she said, sure, just come into the station. I went in and she was on the air and I went in and we were just talking. And she said, hey, just let, let's get on the air real quick. I just want to ask you some questions. I didn't realize it was an audition. And she said, OK, let's get started. I started March of 2020 and then the pandemic hit. And so we kept going. We were there in masks and everything. And it has been the best time. It was an hour just me talking for an hour. I did have some amazing guests there. I learned so much from Jerry about being on radio, learning to stand up and not sit down when you're on a mic. It just helps you speak better, thinking on my feet, taking notes and figuring out what I wanted to talk about, being able to talk about voting and being prepared, having my notes ready, being really mindful of the fact that people are listening. And I built a global audience. I mean, people were listening. I did my post and people were listening from Azerbaijan and India and places I hadn't even heard of. And over that four years, I really learned not only who I was as a host and how to think on my feet and how to respond to things very quickly, but I also learned that I really do enjoy this hosting thing and this talking thing. And I love interviewing people. I'd rather interview people than just, or be interviewed rather than just talk solo. And so it was just truly a, a divine blessing. And then at the end of the year, both Jerry and I were like, it's been four years. Let's take January off. Let's just really think about it. Cause I was trying to decide how I was going to do it. Cause the podcast and the radio show, it was just a lot and I'm building a business and I got bills to pay and <laughs> all these kind of things. And it's a lot of work. If you're going to do it well, just like the podcast, if you're going to do something well, it takes time and it takes investment and it takes work. And I was not going to just half show up. That was not possible. And so we both just took the month of January and we're really discerning about it. And we came back about mid month and said, you know what? We think it's the season. We just think it's the time. And so while I'm really sad about it, I also feel like, you know what? That just means there's something else that's opening up right now, like this change in the podcast. And now I can really go all in on that from a different mindset and a different set of experiences and a different space. I'm so ready for it to be different now. And that experience there, what Jerry taught me, what the radio station taught me, that visibility, because not everybody can say they had a radio show. And that's huge. And I know that, and I'm so honored to be able to say that, and I'm going to use that. And it is 
it was just such a blessing. So yeah, I'm a little sad, but I'm also really excited about what's going to fill that space. So yeah, it was amazing. I loved it every minute, every minute. Nice, Thank you for nice, asking. Nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a, a great story, a great experience. It's all preparation, right? If we think about all of it, any of it yeah. <laughs> throughout life, it's all, it's all that mm -hmm. it's all preparation for what's yes. next and yeah. what's to come. So that's yeah. awesome. Yes. Luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's talk about your future goals. Yeah. I know you are moving into the segment. Is there mm -hmm. anything else with the business you have the intensive? Is there mm -hmm. anything else you want to promote or talk about before we close out? Well, you know what? Thank you so much for saying that because I don't know what is moving in 2024 but something's moving and January is pretty tough. We had this weather come through. Well, y'all had it too. Uh, we had that weather come through. I was supposed to be at a conference in Puerto Rico and that fell through and it put me on my knees. I was like, Lord, what are you doing to me? Because that conference cost me a mint and I couldn't get there. So I had to just really sit. And then I realized this is year seven of the business. There's some other things that have been happening, right? There, there's just something moving. And so the other thing that I am doing in this year seven that I am promoting, and again, I don't know what's moving, but every month I am looking to have seven women, every month, seven women. Because when I looked at my numbers, because you got to do your numbers every day, looked at my numbers, I have enough room with other things that are coming in to have seven women in the seventh year of my business uh, to come through and actually do not the intensive, but to do a, just a three month program. So if you are a woman in business who has a team, and you are ready to get out of that overwhelm. You are like, what am I doing? Why is this team not working? Something's not right. Even if that's all you know is that something is not working. Let's get on a call. Let's see if it makes sense for us to work together. Because here's my commitment to you. I know I'm not for everyone. And that's okay. I don't get offended. My network is great. And if I'm not the person, I probably know somebody. And so I am looking for seven women every month to make transformational change. It may be that you are now ready to retire and you're trying to figure out how to get out from under your business. I got a client that I helped with that too. And she sent me a testimonial that said, I never would have been here had I not worked with you. And the three month program was what I needed because it gave me a couple of weeks in between every time to actually do the work. And now I'm living my best life. So seven women, seven months, all you have to do is be a woman in business with a team that is really trying to figure out what to do next because something is not working. Let's get on a call and figure out what it is. And I'm excited. 2024 is just going to be incredible. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's moving. I'm trying to just let myself go with the flow because I, I got control issues. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I want to know. And I'm trying to tell myself, you know what? It's not for you to know. It's for you to just surrender to the flow and just keep moving. Just keep moving there you and go. to make an there impact you and give back. So this is my opportunity to use my gifts and give back. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Yes, yes, ready and willing, ready and ready willing, and because willing. that application piece is everything. <laughs> you know, you can yes. gain all the insight and knowledge, but you got to be ready to apply it if there's going to be a change, real Absolutely. change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to be ready to apply it. And and here's the thing. You got to not only be ready to do the work, you got to be ready to invest. And I know that's real. And not everybody's ready to invest, and I get that too. And that's okay. Cuz again, sometimes it's just not your time. That's all right. It's all right because you got to do you. It's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is the piece about investing in ourselves. And I think it's a real conversation, right? It's yeah. a real conversation about what investing actually can do for you when yeah. you invest this much and then you have a lifetime of reward, yeah. a lifetime of moving different after <laughs> said yeah. investment that yeah. becomes priceless and yes. doesn't have a real value. And so yes. really getting people to understand that this investment is a temporary piece. Yes. Well, how your life turns out yes. is the point. What is the return? <laughs> what is the return? Right. It is a value conversation, right? What is the value of this investment of your time, energy, money, right? Because time is not renewable. What, at all yes your time is going to continue to move so do you still want to be here what is that saying is it one day or day one mm -hmm. you get to choose mm -hmm. 
Yeah, oh yeah, too. and that time is gonna go with or without yeah. you. So uh, <laughs> that three months you could have spent getting some support, that three month mark is gonna come, and you was either, either supported or you weren't. <laughs> so the time is gonna go. Yeah. So I love it that. Is. Thank you. Yeah. And I really, yeah, it's important that we start to see that there is value in investing yes. in ourselves. Absolutely. I don't want to hold you much longer, yeah. Yeah. but I I want to ask you yours. about community and. Sure. Being part of, and you mentioned the other community that you were in yeah. for broadcasters, yes. these spaces that we can find ourselves mm -hmm. in become so important for our forward yes. movement. So being yes. a part of the Black Podcast Association and having attended Afros and Audio Podcast Festival, yes. thank you. Yes. How have these experiences enriched your journey and what value do you find in community and networking events? Let me tell you something. Wow. And it's hard not to get emotional. And here's why. I've said several times through this conversation, I am very much an introvert and I'm an empath, right? So I absorb a lot of energy and that's what makes it hard for me because I'm absorbing everything that's going around and it just gets really heavy. And I'm a morning person. So when it gets dark, I'm done. So you go to these things and everybody's up at like midnight, y'all I'm done at eight, right? <laughs> so, so it's hard. And because I tend to be very introverted and only professionally extroverted, COVID wasn't hard for me sitting in my house, doing my thing, y'all, I was cool. And so when it got hard for me, I was like, I know my extroverted people are having a really hard time. Cause when I'm like, man, you've been in your house too long. What I found was community for me ended up being one, something that I had to really decide to do. And I had to decide to do it because I don't like networking. I talked earlier about the corporate party. I'm not trying to meet everybody in the room. Just that's not me. Right. Although. I have the personality and the charisma that draws people. So it's that kind of, everybody wants to talk to me, but I'm not trying to talk to nobody. <laughs> so it's this really weird kind of thing. And yet it's not that I hate people because I don't, I have lots of compassion. I really do want to make an impact. I like to make an impact kind of small groups, one-on-one -on -one. It's the, the big things don't work for me. But if you are going to really make an impact, on your own business, in your life, if you are really going to move, community is like the foundation. And I realized probably in year six of my business is when everything started coming together for me. And which is why I say, I think in year seven, it just feels like things are moving different. It hit me in year six that one, I fundamentally don't tend to ask for help. I'm the person that everybody else asks for help. It's just the way it's always been. I don't tend to ask people to, to do business with me. It's just not something I normally do. But in really examining where I wanted this business to go, what I also realized is that by not being in community, I was also depriving myself of what I love, which is to learn. And I find myself really getting down and tired and all of the things when I'm not learning. And when you're by yourself all the time, you're not learning. Even if you're reading and doing these things and, and listening to podcasts, you need other people to challenge your perspectives, to challenge ideas, to push you forward. The energy of community helps you move in ways that you never thought you could when you are in community that is truly about helping everyone rise. And that's what I found in Black Podcasters Association. That's what I found at Afros and Audio. That's what I found in the Us Space here in Houston. That's what I found in Great Wine, Great Women. That's what I found in places that, that I've been very selective about going to. And ones that aren't, I went to them for a specific reason, right? I didn't go to them for community, but the places where I've really gone to for community, because my village is small. My village is tight. Like most of the women in my village, I've literally known since we were born is that tight. But my village of entrepreneurs and, and podcasters, right, has gotten to be expanded to the point of it's tight too but it's tight around, we are really here for community and support and uplift and positivity. 
We believe that there is enough for everyone. We believe that everyone's podcast needs to be the top podcast. We believe that everyone's business needs to be making $4 billion, right? We believe that everyone is there for everyone. It's not about competition. It's not about scarcity. And th because those mindsets for me are so debilitating. And what I realized was by having that reluctance to be in community because so many of the communities are about scarcity and competition and how can you keep someone else down because heaven forbid they get something that you want that social media stuff right that whole thing could really cloud you i realized that i was allowing that to keep me from the communities that were not that and so i had to be intentional about seeing the communities for who they really were and being in those communities that really were about the values that I value, uplifting, positivity, support, um, and being someone who does give, right? In the Black Podcasters Association, going in and saying, hey, y'all, I've been struggling with Ecamm. What the heck is going on? And got on a, the, a call with Steve Worthy. He's, yeah, here's what's going on. What? I couldn't have done that with Podbean or whatever, right? Getting into the us space and saying, hey, what's happening? Or somebody calling me and saying, hey, can we do a strategy session? Absolutely. What's going on with the mic? Hey, I'm selling a mic. I mean, places where it's, it is about giving, right? It is about supporting. It is about just being there for people. But it's also about not expecting everybody to give everything for free. It is, hey, I invested in these mics. I'm not using them anymore. They cost me $400. I'm asking a hundred and nobody going, oh my God, what, you know what I mean? It is us supporting each other in a way that we tend to support everybody else. And that for me has been not only revelationary, but revolutionary in the way I've been able to move coming into 2024. Because they say, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. And it is something for me in 2024 of getting really connected in relationship with people more so in these communities and really understanding and supporting these podcasters and coming back to Averson Audio in the number six. Uh, I'm so excited too, because it matters. And the feel and the energy is about doing something. And i like doing something. Don't just show up just to show up, show up to do something and to make a difference. And so that to me is what community is about. It's about, yeah, you want to have fun. And yes, we want to build relationships and want to get to know each other and lift up each other that on a personal level, but it's about making an impact. And that's what I see in these communities and in Afros and Audio and what you have put together is just, it's masterful and you can tell the heart in it and you can tell the values that are there and you can tell this not only the strategy that is there but the true impact that you are not only desiring to make but you are willing to put in the work to make and that to me is what draws people that's what draws followers it's not followers first it's impact first right it's values first and so if you're really wanting to build community, you build community with people who have similar values and who are willing to do the work to make a similar impact. And that's what, to me, I have really had to come full circle around because that's what I grew up with is about community and community values. And I didn't realize until this entrepreneurship journey how far away I had gotten from that because of all the corporate madness, right? So it is something that for me, I am feeling much more grounded in and desirous of as I move into this, this next phase of whatever it's going to be. I hope that. Ends. Thank you so much. It, it really did. And I appreciate it because it is the point and purpose, right. Of the things that we do. And um, the, the point it was always the day after, right. The impact, yeah. not what we can create together in that room. Cause we know how to show up and have a good time and yeah. share knowledge and share experiences. Mm -hmm. but what happens the day after the conference yeah. and how do we stay in relationship? community and collaboration. And so thank you for saying that. And it also goes to the point, I, I grew up in community too. So that's mm -hmm. how I know what it looks and feels like when it's done 
correctly and yeah. with the heart. But that intentionality, it really accelerates a lot of the process when you're not just, okay, well, I guess I'll go here and figure it out if that's mm -hmm. the right place or whatever. You're clear mm -hmm. and clarity will <laughs> match with yes. intentionality. <laughs> it changes everything. It, it accelerates all of the stuff that we yeah. spin in. So I'm so glad that you reached out on BPA and Steve Worthy said, yeah. I got your back. <laughs> yes, yes, it was right? so awesome, yes. Yes, so that's awesome. And so I really appreciate your time today and you're sharing all of your, your insights and your experience. It's been a pleasure. Please tell people where they can find you yes. online and social media. Yes, absolutely. So my website is laurelrutledge.com and all things Laurel are there. And then you can find me on IG and threads at laurel.k.rutledge. And then I'm on Facebook at The Rutledge Perspective. And I'm on LinkedIn at laurel-k-rutledge. So generally, The Rutledge Perspective or Laurel <laughs> K. Rutledge everywhere is where you can find me. Awesome. Okay. And when can yeah. we expect the next episodes? Sure. So I'm still going to be releasing just about every Wednesday. So there is a new episode of the Rutledge Perspective that is going to be dropping Wednesday. And then the new Founders Intensive segments will start in March. So I'm going to release it during Women's History Month. So I have four women right now that are signed up. So we're going to be recording this month and those will drop on in March for Women's History Month will be the release of that. And then we'll be figuring out the kind of seasons thing because I think we'll probably do maybe 20 to 30 of those each year. And then we'll kind of intersperse the solos with that. So yeah, we'll be finalizing all that. Okay. Soon. But, but this year will be March for the first ones. Yeah. Awesome. And I would be remiss if we don't shout out the team, the people behind the Rutledge perspective yes. and really support, please shout them out. <clears throat> yes. So first of all, who was with me, like from the beginning is Jenny, who is with Silver Bow Project. So she's the one that was first doing all my video clips. She does my email newsletter that comes out. So Jenny is amazing. Silver Bow Projects. She's just fantastic. And then my producer, we started working together this year, Jay at Destroying Doubt Media. Both of them came out of media. Jenny came out of television. Jay came out of radio. He's also a veteran and was one of the first, actually he may have been the first black host on ESPN in Florida who had a sports radio show. He's phenomenal. And I told him he needed to get in BPA. I think he's finally there. So he and Steve were actually supposed to, I think it was Steve, were supposed to connect. So thanks so much to them. He's been doing all my camera angles. So those great camera angles you see in the clips, that's all him. The YouTube stuff that's showing up and now actually getting more than two views. I think I'm getting like four figure views and stuff in YouTube. That's all them. I, I just show up and talk. They make it look good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, shout out to them. It's important that we uh, recognize the folks who yes. are um, helping us and um, supporting yes. us. They they often remain unnamed. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to close this out and okay. you stay right there for me. Okay. All right. I want to give a big thanks to our Afros and Audio and Black Podcasters Association members for supporting our commitment for community and collaboration. If you'd like to join the Black Podcasters Association, the link will be in the description. And if you want to join us at the sixth annual Afros and Audio Podcast Festival, visit afrosandaudio.com. Follow at Afros and Audio on all social media channels, and you can find and follow me at Taleb Jasir on Instagram. Thanks again, Laurel, for being a part of Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. It's been great having you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.